Welcome to this fourth workshop in the Erasmus Plus project, Craft Skills for Garden Conservation. This time we are going to develop knowledge and skills uh, in uh, the cultivation of hedges and topiary in historic gardens. And we are back here at Gunnebo House in Western Sweden. And uh, we're going to prune the hornbeam cones. And one guiding question in the work here at Gunnebo have, have been for many years, how did they do this work back in the 18th century? And when we first uh, started to look at the historical sources for answers to that question, we thought it should be um, only the hedge shears, but the hedge shears proved uh, not very useful for, for the very, very high hedges. So we, we went back and looked, looked more uh, into the historical sources and we found other tools like this one, the pruning hook uh, in English. Uh, it's called a croissant in uh, French. And there are different models. And as you see, it's, it has a really long handle, so you, you reach much higher hedges than you do with, with uh, hedge shears. But often they were used in combination. You started with this tool and then you got the fine result with the hedge shears afterwards. Both Swedish and, and uh, French and English uh, garden manuals described the pruning hook uh, and the hedge slasher. And uh, we also found uh, several images from Sweden, from Netherlands and from France and, and England with this uh, tool. For instance, it is uh, described in two images in the, the Encyclopédie by uh, D'Alembert and, and Diderot in the mid 18th century. I mentioned the two types of tools, the hedge slasher with a shorter, a slightly shorter handle, about one meter or so. Um, the hedge slasher is one traditional tool for uh, clipping high hedges. And then we have the pruning hook with an even longer handle um, that was also used. And we don't really know uh, which one was the most common in Sweden. They have both existed and been used in, in historic gardens in Sweden, but we don't know uh, which model was the most common. As always when you trim or, or uh, clip hedges, uh, you rely on the previous year's cutting. So the quality of the, the clipping last year uh, is uh, the support that you get this year. So you don't work with, we don't use any templates or string as a support to, to create this shape. We try to find where did we, where did we clip this last year? We can see the new growth here and the old clipping here. So yes, last year we clipped this hornbeam here and now we're going to, to get back to that position. So you get the, some support from, from the previous year's clipping when you do this work. When we began trying to, to practice with this tool, we, we used it from above and it was quite heavy to stop the movement and not hitting into your leg or into the ground. Uh, so you had to use some power to stop the movement. We found uh, historical descriptions that the tool should be used from below upwards. So it's much more convenient because then you, the movement and the power, it fades out above your shoulder. When we've been uh, practicing with this tool, we've uh, tried different ways of using it. Um, and one, one way of using it that I find uh, very good is an ergonomic, is to use it in a kind of a pendular, pendular movement. It's 
pushing, pushing down with this hand and pulling up with that hand. So it's like that. It's not, it's much more heavy when you, when you keep the tool like this uh, on a long handle. If you keep, if you keep your hands close to this part, uh, then it's uh, not that heavy. So this works quite well to uh, walk along a hedge and slap like this. Now I'm going to try the hedge slasher um, in addition to the pruning hook. Personally, I, I really like this tool. It feels a bit different from uh, the pruning hook to use this. I think uh, I compare this more to using an axe. Perhaps you even can see that I'm using a bit more power uh, with this tool. It's heavier, it has a thicker handle, uh, thick steel, it's kind of a heavy axe-like tool. Um, whereas the pruning hook is more like using a, a, a scythe, but you are using it uh, on hedges instead. So this is uh, kind of heavy work, but I, I like this one and I feel that I have control over uh, the shape that I'm creating with this with this tool and Obviously, it's not that long the handle so you don't reach as far you have to have a ladder or a scaffold to work on uh, to to do the really high hedges as well When you're using both the head slasher and the pruning hook you only get one chance, so you have to be quite uh, powerful in the movement. You have to, to do, use some, some power or force. Um, to, because if you just get half of the material, you don't get a second chance. It's hard to, to uh, uh, just take a little and, and, uh, and improve the shape afterwards. So you get one chance. You have to look at the material that you're cutting as well um, to find uh, the right angle. It's uh, like basic principles from uh, handicraft or slöjd. If you hit, if you, you try to cut like this, with a knife or with uh, with a uh, pruning tool like this one, it's really really hard uh, to do it uh, in 90 degrees. You can do it with a scissor or with a hedging shear, but uh, with a hedge shear, but um, it's really hard with a knife or with a, a hedge slasher or pruning hook to to cut like this. But if you're cutting diagonally. Uh, then it works. So it's much easier to do it. So you have to hit diagonally to the material. Um, then it's, it works. It doesn't really work when I show now here with this short piece, but, but uh, um, di working diagonally is, is the way to do it. The basic principle is working diagonally. Uh, because then you can cut the material. Uh, 90 degrees is really hard, diagonally works very well. And regarding the result with uh, both the pruning hook and the hedge slasher, uh, I would say that uh, the result is not technically perfect and it can um, be uh, because of uh, my uh, lack of skill, or it can has, uh, have to do with, with the tools. We find the, the to these tools quite time efficient. Uh, so you can work, you can do a, a large hedge in, in uh, quite quickly with these tools. So they are time efficient, but they are not very accurate. They, they don't give you the perf technical perfection that modern power tools do. Uh, it's much uh, easier to, to uh, get uh, 
very strict lines with uh, modern power tools. After using the pruning hook or the hedge slasher, you finish uh, with the hedge shear um, to get uh, a good shape, uh, the intended shape. So the, the things that you, you missed with the other tools can be taken with this one. And this is uh, described already in sources in the mid-19th century. So it's not uh, just our idea. The tools were combined historically as well. Here it's just uh, looking for the inaccuracies and how to improve the shape to get as, as strict shape as possible. And with this tool, as you can see, I'm working 90 degrees towards the material and it works because I have the scissor function with two blades going against each other. The largest difference, I would say, it's you have the the technical perfection with modern power tools and it's um, another way of working with your body as well because you are working with the power tools you are using the body in a much more statical way this is much more di dynamic you can use it downwards sideways upwards you can use it with short handles or with long handles so you can use the the tool in many different ways and you use your body in a dynamic way with the traditional tools. We are now in the southern formal garden, the southern uh, pleasure garden at Gunnebo and uh, we have uh, the grove, the bosque, uh, with lime hedges um, and we're going to prune them with the hedge, uh, with the pruning hooks and hedge slashers as well. And one thing that uh, that one could ask oneself is um, for how long did these uh, tools exist in Sweden and uh, why did they disappear? And the main reason that we have found for their disappearance is that they were dangerous. So um, the gardeners turned to uh, hedge shears, manual hedge shears, instead of uh, pruning hooks and hedge slashers. And then also uh, the gardens changed and high hedges were not so common anymore. So you could reach everything with a manual hedge shear. Uh, you didn't have to have such a long handle and a tool that reach with a far reach. If you're going to use these tools, uh, it's uh, important uh, for, for safety reasons to, to have a proper handle that works well. And um, something that happens sometimes is that the handle dries and it shrinks and it get loosens. Um, so you have to you mount it properly with the screw. Every year you, you have to uh, kind of uh, have a look at the tool uh, so that it is uh, safe to, to uh, use. And then of course you have to, you have, to have control uh, when you're using it. Um, you both uh, in relation to your own body so that you don't uh, cut yourself and also in a visitor garden or in a garden with other people, you have to have um, um, a good overview where people are. So don't slash around corners. <laughs> <laughs> 